to Desmond's Donders. Let's head off on a donder. We're at Port Soy Pool. Well, I'm attempting, just attempting, to compete with the wind. Autumn has certainly arrived, along with the autumn storms and winds. With the weather way it is, there's uh, not much chance of seeing whales, dolphins or anything this week, but we'll keep our eyes open. in the wind to look at the pool. The tide is out and it's empty. We'll have a look later when it's full and we'll probably have a look round but in this wind I don't expect to be able to fly the drone. We did manage a couple of drone flights on the Sunday morning and here's a, a look round the area from the air, concentrating mainly on the park up and yes that road up the side of the hill to the right is the way in and out. At the right hand side towards the bottom you can see the pool as it uh, is filling with water on the rising tide. Tides up, the wind's still blowing. But I somehow don't think we'll be going for a swim. Uh, I think we'll limit ourselves to a walk.
Although it might seem noisy, windy, and loud, <laughs> it was actually quite a soothing sound, and I begin to understand ASMR, I believe. And we uh, we slept well to the sound of the waves. again, this time concentrating on the pool. You can see the scum brought in by the sea and the, the tracks of it either side as it forms lanes caused by the wind. Port Soy Outdoor Swimming Pool was constructed with considerable help from volunteers. It was completed and opened in 1936. The seawater swimming pool was made by building a concrete wall parallel to the coast and adjoining two rock spurs together. Here on the rocky east coast it was comparatively easy to enclose a rock pool, which could be filled and refreshed by the tides. As the tide in this time lapse recedes, so did the enthusiasm of the local council for this pool.
In the mid-1980s, to continue all movement of the tides through parts of the rock surrounds, a scouring effect meant the pool emptied during low tides, making it futile for swimming. The local people were hopeful that Aberdeenshire Council would undertake the full repair of the pool, which was viewed as a very popular facility for the town and was one of the safest bathing areas along the Moray Firth coast. The council balked at the costs involved and as those who controlled the finances had the last word, pool after pool closed its doors along the Moray coast.
Thank you for watching this week's Desmond's Donuts. Please take nothing but memories, leave nothing but tracks. We hope you enjoyed it and you will join us next time. In the meantime, please think about subscribing.